I think people get tattooed because, you know, there's not a lot of real stuff left in the world. And it's all like a 24 hour news cycle. Nothing, nothing lasts. With tattooing, it's blood, it's pain, it's permanence. And when you get that needle in your skin for the first time, you have to be there. You can't just call it in. You have to sit there and take the pain and then sit there and heal it. And then you gotta live with the consequences of your, of your action. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Um, this is my second time filming this topic, so I've had a little time to think and I wanted to refilm um, and have a few extra things to say that I didn't say on the last one. So, what I want to talk about today is uh, greed, right? Greed is how it relates to tattooing, tattoo shops, tattooers, and how it. Uh, can affect people's behavior and their mentality, all right? So, as you might have noticed last week as well, um, I was a bit off, my energy was a bit messed up. I had some drama in the shop that I alluded to, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about it today because it's a bit of a big deal to me and my family. Um, I had someone working for me, running my shop, my shop manager, who uh, turns out was fucking stealing from everybody, including me. Um, you know, stealing deposits, skimming from the artist pay, skimming from the shop pay. Someone I trusted and I considered a friend. Uh, so it was pretty shit to find this out and then to now be going through all the auditing and accounting of everything that's missing and the amounts and just the way it was done. And yeah, everyone here is pretty disappointed. I'm more disappointed myself. Um, clearly I'm not paranoid enough and I don't think anybody would ever say that about me that I'm not paranoid enough but I'm not paranoid enough so yeah it's pretty shit go it's pretty shit go to have someone you trust and you would have done anything for to betray you and steal from your family pretty fucked up right I don't know what kind of piece of shit does that but she is an absolute piece of shit uh, you see a photo of her right here I don't give a fuck man um, you know, it's a different time and a different era, so I can name and shame. And, you know, that's about fucking it for the time being. So, uh, her name's Ashley Danielle Whittingham. Goes by the name Corey White. Ran my shop for three fucking years with her boyfriend for the last year. We had Christmas dinners together. Uh, you know, had them over to our house all the time. Paid for her during COVID. Gave her some wage money. She was there and my baby was born at my house, you know, held my newborn baby. Someone you consider that you trust because you've had these intimate moments with as a friend and you leave them in charge of your shop, you know, and they just fucking can't stop stealing from everybody, which is fucked up, right? So greed, right? This all comes down to greed. Greed and envy, I think, you know, and, and greed's a funny thing with tattooing. You know, I've seen it a lot. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not infallible. Uh, when I was younger, you know, you're, you're making good money. You want to make more money, you know, and, and uh, it's one of the things you have to really, when you're a young tattooer, you really have to check yourself in the greed department. Yeah, we make decent money as it is. Uh, people work hard. And I think some tattooers lose sight of the fact that, you know, the average person Makes it a couple hundred bucks a day, maybe, you know, and we're charging, you know, 200 bucks an hour more for some artists, right? Or like a little walk in tattoo, like this big might be 200 bucks. You know, bang it out in 10 minutes, right? And we're like, oh, it's only a 200 buck tattoo. And we're like, well, yeah, that guy worked eight fucking hours to earn that money. And so there's sometimes you need to remind tattooers of this and remind yourself. Every tattoo is important. And people work hard for their cash. I mean, there's people that have money that, you know, have businesses or inherited it or, you know, whatever. They earn a lot for whatever reason. But the average tattoo customer, you know, working class people, they work for their money. And being greedy can really affect, uh, you know, your reputation, your well-being. People that get too ahead of themselves, young tattooers. I mean, I'm going to say it's mostly, mostly younger, newer people to the business 
that are trying to do is make as much money as they can as quick as possible, right? They, they're new to tattooing and they, they're like, oh shit, I've never made money before. And they see it as a sprint, right? Just fucking collect as much as they can, like the coins in Mario Kart. You know, and it's, you gotta, you gotta slow down, man. It's a fucking, it's, a, it's not a sprint, you know, it's a marathon, it's a lifelong career, right? You wanna make good tattoos, create a good reputation, have people trust you, trust your pricing, trust that you're fair. You know, that's why, like, at my shop, you know, we've been very, I think, for a city shop, you know, uh, almost the same price for 10 years now. We, you know, we've gone up a little bit, but not much. You know, like, I hear stories of these black and gray realism guys that charge four or five hundred bucks an hour or stuff. I'm like, oh, you know, good if you can get it. You know what I mean? Good if you're, if you're the, the hot guy at the moment and people want to pay that. That's great. You know what I mean? I, for me, I'd, I'd rather have my long-standing clientele charge a fair rate and be good, you know, uh, and just keep on trucking for the next couple of decades, right? And I look at the same as my shop. All my artists, fair rate, you know, and, you know, it's, uh, it's greed's one of those funny things, man, because it's, it's so fucking insidious, right? Because I think greed goes with narcissism in the sense that, you know, you start thinking you're fucking awesome, right? Like, I'm fucking awesome. I need to charge more. Or that person's lucky to get a tattooed behind me. They need to pay more. And that starts feeding itself, right? Like, well, they're paying me more, you know, because cause I'm fucking awesome. And it's like this negative circular logic, right? And, you know, and greed's, greed's a motherfucker, man. It turns, you know, you've, if you're greedy with people, you know, they might pay it once, but they won't come back. You know, they'll tell people that you're overcharging or you're overpriced or that you're greedy, you know. Or people that are too nitpicky on the times, so like, oh, we went five minutes over, I got to charge you extra. You know, being greedy with that, you know. I mean, it's one of those things, right? And then with the envy, you know, it's, it's you've got, like, the woman running my shop, you know, she's got no skills in the tattoo world. You know, I taught her how to run a shop. But she's seeing artists make money. She's got the cash around her. And so, you know, she's like, fuck, I, I need some of that money. I should get paid more. You know, and I paid her well. Right? But here she is fucking stealing thousands of fucking dollars, right? For everybody. You know? Fucking greedy fucking bitch, right? I'm greedy. Right? And uh and so it's one of those things that now that I've been through this experience, um I need to watch for the signs. And now you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So you you look back and you're fucking playing this shit over in your head, and you're like, fuck, there's all these red flags that I saw. And all this shit people are telling me now, all these red flags, that had I connected these dots with this perfect 2020 hindsight, you know, I would have picked up on it a lot sooner. But, but I didn't, because I wasn't connecting those dots, right? And so I feel a little bit silly, you know, I'm, uh, you know, no one likes to get played, you know. But it is what it is. I learned a lesson. Cost me a bit of money, you know. But the greed thing, you know, apart from the stealing and the theft and the fraud, you know, the greed thing in the everyday tattoo shop stuff, you know, um, it's important. I think any business where you've got money involved and you make your own prices is very easy to fall into that into that greed trap to get, you know, big fucking eyes where you're like, I'm just going to take, take, take. And if you've listened to any of my other videos, you've seen that my energy is always about giving, 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 right? Trying to give back, trying not to take, trying to keep that balance with things. I price most of the sh stuff in the shop and I really try to keep the prices fair. Look, and every now and then I might overquote something because I think it'll take a while and someone else thinks it'll take less. But, you know, if someone overquotes something here, when it comes to, if the tattoo was quoted, say, an hour and a half, and it's done in 45 minutes, you know, I'll always make sure they get charged the right amount, even though the quote was higher, we'll knock the price down, right? And I think that's the way to go, you know, is to keep those, keep those prices fair so people keep coming back and people don't get jaded. You know, you get these, especially when we get guest artists, uh, it hasn't happened here, but another friend of mine shop, Guest artists that come from overseas, you know, like say Hong Kong or somewhere like that, or Korea, you know, and they just they just come to Australia and they just see dollar signs, right? 
And they charge ridiculous fucking money. And people will pay it. You know, they'll pay it one time, right? And, you know, you hear this, this, this girl came from Hong Kong and she was charging people $600 an hour for a little, little fucking fine line things, right? At my friend's shop. And, uh, and I was just like, what the fuck, right? And had to fuck her off, right? It's not good for business, not good for anybody. It's definitely not good for tattooing. This is what I mean, these young tattooers that don't understand. You know, I grew up in the era of tattooing where you were busy in the summer and you were quiet in the winter, right? So it was this constant up and down of clients, right? You might go days without tattooing in the winter, right? Back in the 90s. Pretty fucking common. And so you appreciated the summers when things were busy and you didn't take it for granted. And you didn't take the piss out of people, right? And you didn't overcharge them, you know? And I think that's... Because tattooing is so busy now, people just feel like they can get away with what they want. I mean, there was a time here when I had over a two-year wait list for a consult, and I still kept my hourly rate the same. I never put my hourly rate up. My hourly rate has been the same for 10 years. I've just put it up this year and only 50 bucks an hour higher, right? Just in line with the other guys in my neighborhood, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's... Money's a funny thing, man. It makes people, you know, it makes people fucked up. It makes people do stupid shit, as I've already talked about. But in tattooing, you know, it, it, it can really mess your career up if you overcharge people, right? It can really mess people up if they think they're being overcharged. Even if you're being fair, you have to communicate to people why you're charging what you charge and why things cost the way they cost. You know, like people... Uh, often on my co on my videos of me tattooing Tabori, or you know pictures of me tattooing Tabori, you get these comments like, "Why would you do that? It's so slow," you know. And I, I said, "Well, it is what it is, right? It's what I do." Yeah, but you're just trying to make more money, and it's like oh, that's a stupid comment, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not tattooing slow so that I can make more money. I make the same money whether I'm tattooing Tabori or I'm tattooing my machine, right? A tattoo, it just takes, it's just a different process. You know what I mean? It's just a funny thing, right? It's a funny, it's a funny way that customers or clients or um, observers, right, observe how things are done, right? There's different points of view, you know? <sighs> yeah. So, anyways, that's my little talk today about greed and money. It's such a big topic, man. You know, and like I said, I'm a little bit cut over what's going on here recently. I got to rebuild my shop now because not only was that stuff going on, you know, I've been so focused on my farm and setting up my farm and so focused on my kids that I thought I had somebody that I trusted running the show. And really that person was just running my shop into the ground, right? I wasn't paying attention. So look, the, at the end of the day, the, the fault lies with me and I'm going to rebuild my shop now, you know rebuild it with some new people, some new protocols, and pay a lot more attention to, uh, to the day-to-day -day things of what's going on, you know? So if you own a shop, all right, or if you work in a shop, and you have somebody that handles your money, my advice to you is fucking audit them. Don't tell them what you're going to do. Just one day, come in, sit them in a fucking chair, and go through all the paperwork and make sure everything adds up and the money's where it's supposed to be. These people who did this to, to us never would have suspected. I mean, they had their faults, but I never, and nobody here would have suspected them as being thieves, right? And, and that's the thing that burns my ass a little bit, right? Is that there was no fucking hint of it, right? And it's happened to other people I won't name, other big tattoo names, have had the exact same thing happen, I've learned recently. You know, so if you own a shop or you run a shop or you're fucking working in a shop, man, talk to your boss, talk to your partner, and if someone's handling cash and deposits, <coughs> fucking audit them immediately, right? Because you never know who's stealing from you. You need to check and make sure everything adds up the way it's supposed to. Because this person quit in the middle of the night, one day to the next, because the whole thing fell apart and she couldn't hide her thievery anymore. And the amount of uh, bullshit I have to deal with now because of this is fucked, right? So, yeah. I don't normally put my shit on the street, right? This is a little bit therapeutic for me to talk about it because, you know, <clears throat> there's not much I can fucking do, right?
So, anyways, if you want to send me uh, any DMs, leave a comment. Um, I'm happy to have a conversation. And, uh, yeah, things will get better from here. So, guys, thanks for listening. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.